We want to welcome you back to the Flathead Home Show, where we talk every single week about trends in the real estate market and also what is happening right now with real estate in the Flathead Valley. I'm Leah Lindsay. And I'm Justin Metcha. And suppose today, Leah, we discuss tiny homes with big potential. Big right potential. Right here in the Flathead. I like it. Okay. Well, first, I want to let you know who brings this show to you every single week, makes it possible. Remax, Rocky Mountain Real Estate, and Brian Murphy, and Nikki Marengo, and of course, the one and only... Brian Nicodemus in the studio with us today. Hi, Leah. How you doing? Justin? Yeah. Awesome. Well, welcome, welcome. Now, you. you are also the head, the president of the Northwest Montana Association of Realtors. That is correct. And so you bring all kinds of good stuff that, uh, you know, you're going to tell us all about the big, tiny big, homes. Yeah. Big potential, tiny homes. Tiny home, big potential. <laughs> Absolutely. I like it. And also making the show spo- possible is New West Builders and Murphy's Carpet Cleaning, Stat Restoration, and Escape Now Spas. And Justin, we have another guest in the studio as well. We sure do. Realtor with National Parks Realty, Garth Boxich. Did I do that yeah. right, Gar- Garth? You got it. You nailed it. Okay, perfect. You know why well, I'm excited to have Garth here as well? Garth has a couple of projects coming up, up in the valley. I'm hoping you're willing to share a little bit of information with us because I believe you're, uh, you've got your hands on some tiny homes with great potential. We do. Absolutely. Very cool. It's kind of a huge trend. I mean, you know, you turn on HGTV and everybody's talking about tiny homes and, you know, Brian, are, do we have a lot of them here in the Flathead that you know of? You know, I don't, but I think it's definitely catching on all around the country. They have magazines actually just for tiny homes. Mm-hmm. And I see a lot of stuff even on Facebook about tiny homes. It's definitely the way to go if you're trying to downsize and maybe get a, a lower mortgage and, and live a little more responsibly. It's definitely a trend. And there is a big move to like declutter your life. And I actually have a friend, they're going to do a big conference with just all these people coming in as speakers to to help people figure out how to get rid of stuff and walk away from stuff. And you know, speaking of conferences and trends, actually Portland, Oregon, which actually leads the nation according to many studies regarding uh, tiny homes and the movement toward tiny homes, Portland being one of the most friendliest cities for tiny homes. Oh, I imagine, right? They, they hold a, uh, a conference called Big, or I'm sorry, build small, live large. Build small, live large. Uh, you know, summit right there uh, held in Portland. And uh, it's an interesting, you, you, you touched on the word trend there. It's an interesting trend. It's an interesting movement. Mm-hmm. And so today I'd like to discuss, or let's bring it to the table to see if that movement has infiltrated itself into the flathead. And if so, why or how? You discuss downsizing. You mm-hmm. know? I, it looks like according to studies, many people consider tiny homes as an alternative to higher cost of living with housing. You know, maybe rent is too high or the purchase price of a home traditionally has maybe gone out of reach for people. So they thought, well, let's shrink the house and shrink right. the price. Mm-hmm. You know, on, on the other hand, though, Garth is here to illustrate another end of that spectrum in that the events, the investment potential behind the trend. Yeah, exactly. When, uh, you know, I started looking at, at doing a development on a piece of property that we bought back in 2012. Uh, you know, one of the first things we looked at was zoning. We have the nightly, weekly potential for, for uh, rental potential for the zoning in, in Whitefish. And this property is uh, right next to the Whitefish Lake Golf Course, uh, next to the Grouse Mountain City Park there. And this is where a realtor becomes a developer. Mm. Yeah, exactly. And what, a, what, a, what a great, kind of exciting accident. move. Yeah. Okay. Just, so it- just morphed into it. And uh, so we started looking at doing a, a larger scale condos, uh, townhouse. And then I, 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 you know, I caught wind of the tiny home. I don't necessarily like to call these tiny homes. They're like tiny homes on steroids. Uh, okay. okay. One, okay. one bedrooms Bigger are tiny homes. Designer yeah. tiny homes. Designer <laughs> tiny homes. There you go. The one bedrooms, you know, roughly 800 square foot, two okay. bedrooms, a thousand square foot. Uh, we actually have a three bed, three bath, 1250 square foot. Really? It's just really streamlined, no wasted space. Okay. Um, and yeah. how many? So you've got this property right next to Grouse Mountain Lodge. Yeah, right across the soccer fields from the Grouse Mountain Lodge. Uh, we have, uh, it will be 11 total units. 11 on, on, units. Uh, yeah, on uh, just over an acre. And these are zoned uh, these are, nightly, weekly. Correct. We've got that nightly, weekly zoning. So th- these have that that capability. These, these I, I will be marketing these toward your, uh, you know, out of, town for the most part out of state uh vacation homeowners okay. that they can cool. come and stay and have a place in whitefish and enjoy everything that, that the flathead valley has to offer when they're not here they can rent it out and uh 
How awesome is that? That'll cover yeah. some mortgage costs and some taxes and so yeah. forth, too. So if you can come up Hopefully and utilize all of it. it. If you can come up and utilize the, the unit as well, then you're really getting twofold. You're getting a great investment. Mm-hmm. You get it's paying for your mortgage, and you get to use it. Mm-hmm. That's And that's exactly Brilliant. What, what the the new VRBO trend right. and, and movement is all about, is being able to own your own home in this case. And when you're not there, it's paying for itself. Wow. Hey, Garth, I have a question. You mentioned zoning as one of the possible restrictions on a parcel that would allow you to do uh, uh, tiny homes. Uh, is there an, any other restrictions that you know come up? I mean, is there a developmental restriction on how many units you can put on a piece of property, or certain tax implications that we may not be aware of? Well, I, I think when you're when you're going to uh, try to get approval for any property, you've you've got property development standards that mm-hmm. you, that you've got to adhere to, and one of those is 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 what the the max density can be in, in a particular you know zoning district. So you've you've got a lot, and and then you've just got the the actual logistics of how many units can you fit on a piece of property and still make it comfortable for people. Gotcha. There, there's a there's a happy medium there. Well, let's explore that. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll come back talk more about zoning. Maybe more about uh, do we have potential in the homes that we already own to do VRBO? Maybe what is going on with the Northwest Montana Association of Realtors making things happen like that? And and what an opportunity that you're bringing to the Flathead right oh, here. Yeah, Garth, that's, that's very exciting. So we will be back. And of course, we want to thank New West Builders, Murphy's Carpet Cleaning, Stat Restoration, Escape Now Spas, and Brian Murphy and Nikki Marengo at REMAX Rocky Mountain Real Estate. Ken at Escape Now Spas understands the power of escaping to a world of peace and relaxation. He's using his 22 years of pool and spa repair expertise to bring high-quality American-made spas to the Flathead Valley. Mention this ad and receive $1,000 off Platinum Series Spas, $750 off Escape Plus Series, $500 off Escape Series, and $250 off Patio Series Spas. Escape Now Spas also offers pool and spa chemicals. Visit Ken at the Montmala Whitefish for your new spa today. Are you planning on building your dream home or maybe renovating your current one? As a Flathead Parade of Homes multiple time award winner, Eric Payne with New West Builders will bring your vision to life. An experienced contractor, New West Builders partners with you from design to site prep through construction and completion, exceeding your expectations every step of the way at a drastically more affordable rate than you ever thought possible. Find out more online, newwestbuilders.com. New West Builders, the luxury high-end custom home builder. Luxury as defined by design. Design, not by cost. When people have a flood or fire, they worry that the repair cost will be more than their insurance company will approve. No worries with Stat Restoration. We use the same estimating software and pricing as the insurance companies. Plus, we work directly with your adjuster so you don't have to. Take your worry out of that flood or fire. Call Stat Restoration. We are your masters of disaster. Welcome back to the Flathead Home Show, Leah Lindsay. Justin Metcha. And of course, we have some great guests in the studio. We are talking about tiny homes and also really VRBO. Yeah, tiny homes with big opportunity. Absolutely. And Brian Nicodemus, of course, who is the president of the Northwest Montana Association of Realtors and Realtor at Remax Rocky Mountain Real Estate and Garth Boxich, who is with us from National Parks Real Estate. But you also are here talking about a community that you're developing and it's a tiny home community. It is. and uh, On steroids. And, on steroids. And, and we actually have two. I've touched base a little bit on, on the first one that, that is zoned nightly, weekly. Mm-hmm. The second one that we're putting in front of the city uh, is not zoned nightly, weekly. It's your regular residential zoning. Okay. Okay. And so it's, it's, it's a different animal. It's, it's for people looking to get into that uh, conventional tiny home situation at a lower cost that would be, you know, quote unquote, affordable housing. This There's, is more towards the other end of the spectrum here. The purpose behind a tiny home, one investment, two affordable housing. Exactly. Two, two so, different ideas. Two different totally. Buyers right there. And there's yeah. some, something that sort of hip right now, this, this whole trend to 
to just be simple downsize. and downsize. downsize <laughs> and uh, yeah. it's interesting. It really is. It's huge. It is huge. And, and it's, it makes sense. You don't need 4,000 square feet to be happy. Hey, you have not, not seen my closet. Tall, <laughs> well, you might. I'm a tall glass of water over here. I need my space. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, you were talking about zoning, and that's probably the key to everything when it comes to mm -hmm. doing tiny homes or VRBOs or anything like that. And I know, Brian, you're you're really involved with zoning here in the Valley with being a, the president of the Northwest Montana Association of Realtors. Well, Leah, yeah, I, I definitely have to stay on top of what uh, properties are zoned. And, and different zonings allow different stuff. For example, mm -hmm. a, an Ag 10 zoning, you can have one house on 10 acres. Mm -hmm. Okay. A resort residential zoning like Garth's Project, you can go really dense. That's how he can get 12 or 11 units on an acre. Now, a lot of it depends on sanitation as well. If you've got city water and city sewer, then you can make smaller parcels. But if okay. you don't, you're dealing with the county then, you've got to have at least an acre if you're going to have a well and a septic. And so, so those are different design standards, certainly mm -hmm. out in the county versus Sony in the city. City's different. Well, it's interesting. I was actually driving by that RV park that is kind of up by the blue moon on Highway 40. Mm -hmm. And I drove back in there. And there's like some tiny homes back in there. I was driving along. I'm like, What? I haven't seen Interesting. those. Interesting. <laughs> There's just a couple, but well, that's that's you know. uh, that's county territory, isn't it? That is the county. Yes. Okay, we can expect some interesting things in and the county. Well, at times, I right? would guess within that RV park, though, that's sure. probably zoned for nightly, weekly. It you do, know, it does have a county type of business zoning or unzoning. I guess that's what okay. I would say. It's unzoning. unzoned, so okay. it does allow for many uses. Um, probably the only zoning on that would be um, except scenic corridor. I would think. Yeah, it sounds right. You know, both of you gentlemen are licensed realtors. And yes. as realtors who occasionally represent buyers, what would the motivating factor be to jumping into a tiny home community? Would it simply be price? Would it be trend or acknowledgement, sense of community? Just a guess. You know, I don't know for sure, but uh, I think it's probably all of those things. If you like being close and you like your neighbors, I think that could be a very nice knit community that watches out for each other and watches out for your home when you're gone. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a smaller house is easily less on electricity and heating bills and so forth. Yeah, good point. Um, so there's another advantage there. And, and it's funny, they're making even um, shipping containers into homes now, yeah. tiny homes. And, and I've seen a few of those around the valley. And uh, that's a pretty interesting project. Alternative housing structures. Garth, any thoughts on that in the future? Well, the New buyers project. that have been in contact with me for our two projects are, are coming at it from two different angles. Mm -hmm. the, the, the project that's zoned nightly, weekly, those are your vacation home buyers. They're, they're not as concerned with price point. They're more concerned with having a really nice place to come and stay and hang out at and, and having the ability to rent it out. So th those are, those units are going to be built to a, to a higher standard with higher end finished materials. Okay. Uh, the project that's not zoned nightly, weekly, those, those are the people looking to spend, you know, at least six months or more of the year at, at the place or it, have it be their primary residence. So mm. they're concerned more with price point. Right. It just, um, it, it just seems to me that you were going to sell these so quickly. That's the goal. I mean, it's going to go nuts. Hopefully. And then you're gonna, you are gonna—you need to build some more. Brian, oh, we'll do another one. Okay. Brian, over the break, we were discussing <laughs> some of the price points of his, uh, of the more, um, the not nightly, weekly zoned tiny homes. You're, the more you're, affordable. The more housing? affordable. Yeah. Right. Was that, there was yeah. such a thing in Whitefish. Yeah. But. It sounded like it was a pretty affordable price tag for Whitefish though. Well, I think Garth told me he wants it around under 300,000 per unit. Is that correct? Y yeah. I, I want to try to keep the, you know, the one bedrooms as close to 200 as possible. That's and, amazing. And, and the two bedrooms is, you know, as, as close to mid 200s as possible. Now that's all dependent on, on how much our, you know, it, and construction costs and, and infrastructure is going to going to run, but that's that's the goal. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a great location where you're building too. It's really close to town. It's close to the golf course, river. I mean, there's a it's a nice location. For yeah, you. there's a lot happening on that west side of town, and and like Leah hinted on, if if, if these if these are a success. We'll do another one. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's out in the county somewhere with more right. land. And, and maybe it's in Kalispell. And maybe yeah, it's exactly. in Columbia Falls. And, you know. I yeah, know. We've already got our eye on a couple. couple well, you know, if it's a success, property. they're going to duplicate it. Somebody else is going to copy it and it's, do it somewhere else. It's, it's, it's already happened. Yeah. Already it, well, and it definitely just feels like on, on this one hand, you've got this luxury, wonderful vacation home that you can purchase and, and actually rent out. And on the other side, you're just filling this huge need. 
here in the Absolutely. valley Absolutely. of that affordable mm-hmm. home especially with that need. second project mm-hmm. what about a, what about financeability i know some of the lenders that are listening to the show are going to be thinking well what kind of foundation are you putting underneath mm-hmm. those things yeah so w- with ours we, we great are great question yeah that is a good question and 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 we've we've been thinking about that all along cuz like you said i am a realtor and a buyer's agent and that's something i have to be concerned mm-hmm. with all the time with my clients and so we do uh, poured fa- concrete foundations it's all stick built it's on site it's not an off site trailered in unit this is this is a real house mm. um, however we are condominiumizing our developments so you own the home the land is communally owned uh, gotcha. now there, there is a misnomer that condos cannot be fha approved and that's not true it, the Montera in, in Whitefish is a perfect example. It's an FHA approved right. project, right. so you you can get you know every type of fa- financing that you would be able to get for a stick built home, hmm. as long as we jump through those hoops to remain FHA compliant. And it sounds like the de- by design, it's more appealing to the primary resident as opposed to a secondary unit, possibly, and therefore more than likely going to stay within the FHA guidelines for condominium community. Correct. Correct. The, the, the second street project that we that we have uh, proposed, we need to keep it compliant FHA mm-hmm. and and, and um, See, open I, the door. I, for I had it. someone criticize t- the tiny home movement one time, and they said it's really just glorified trailer parks. And I said, no, there's there's this in lies one of the mm-hmm. major differences. You know, it's actually harder sometimes to buy a manufactured house than it is one of your tiny homes or one of your more. Uh, I guess uh, the affordable housing in Whitefish. Well, certainly if you've got a manufactured home before 1977, yeah. it's really hard to get financing on. You might get something from a credit union, but FHA, government-backed loans won't do it. They don't look that and I'd say about Gar's project, building in Whitefish, they're going to be up to code all the way. You can't mm-hmm. build anything in Whitefish, probably anywhere in the Valley, really, that uh, you can't finance. I don't know anybody would do that. So I'm sure there'll be great projects and easy to get a mm-hmm. loan on. Mm-hmm. And, and let's talk, I, I, we're about out of time. And gosh, I think we could just sit here for like an hour and talk about this. But I, I, we can I, come back. I think we're going to have to <laughs> and explore the VRBO. Sure. As, especially, I mean, both. So your website for the tiny home community, the cabins at Whitefish is what they're called, right? It is. Uh, the website is the cabins at whitefish.com. Mm. And when you go over there, there's some wonderful s- renderings and sketches. And, and yep. I haven't really explored a whole lot of it, but you've actually showing what the community is going to look like. And then you also show the individual units. Exactly. Yeah. So. It's, I think it, the website turned out really nice. Yeah. It's beautiful. Beautiful. Very impressive. So go check that out. Absolutely. I, I want to keep you guys with me for all the time. You're both such great. You're so well, great on the panel. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Appreciate it, Justin. Thank yeah. you. Brian, Garth, this was fantastic. Yeah, Justin, absolutely. We, we need to give him a door code or something. Come on back. Yeah. We need to talk more. <laughs> well, I'd love to come talk to you about VRBO a little bit more and a little bit about what our association is doing uh, to give back to community and so forth. So you maybe bet. you guys can have me back and I can talk about that. Sounds Let's great. Let's do that for our next show. Sounds great. Let's okay. do it. Okay. All right. And uh, National Parks Realty and uh, Mr. Garth Boxich and of course Brian Nicodemus, Remax Rocky Mountain Real Estate, as well as president of the Northwest Montana Association of Realtors. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Absolutely. And we are going to wrap the show. Uh, thank you very much, Remax Rocky Mountain Real Estate and Brian Murphy and Nikki Morango for bringing us the show every week. Also, Eric Payne and New West Builders, Murphy's Carpet Cleaning, Stat Restoration, and Escape Now Spas. Welcome home.